Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Following Christ. Don't forget that you can subscribe to this channel so that you can get these videos as they are constantly uploaded. You can also like and search through the videos that I have previously posted. Uh, don't forget that you can also follow me on Facebook at the community name, The Watchmen for Christ. I post links to my videos there, as well as share devotionals, Bible study guides, and different biblical quotes, things about prophecy and Bible verses as inspiration um, for day-to-day -day activities. Don't forget also that if you need to contact me, you can contact me at my email address that I will post below. Um, today I want to discuss a very interesting topic. Uh, that topic is going to be, are many in the Christian world actually preaching another Jesus? Um, the reason why I came up with this topic is because I recently have had i uh, been bombarded, actually, by some friends, um, people that I associate with online, uh, different forums and chats that I frequent. Um, I'm, I'm hearing this, I've been hit with a theory, which is actually pretty large in the Christian world, and it actually has been for some time. Uh, many of you may know it as uh, is it Saved by Grace or we're under grace and not under the law. Well, many have been taught or accept this belief or the belief that those after the crucifixion of Jesus are somehow saved differently um, from those who were believers in God prior to the crucifixion of Christ. Um, you ever hear of the term, I'm a New Testament Christian? Um, what many actually mean by that term uh, is they are being saved by grace only, okay, and not of the works of the law like they tried to say that the people of the Old Testament were. Um, now, to properly answer the question of are many in the Christian world preaching another Jesus, um, we need to actually look at Scripture. And through Scripture only, um, we will see the true character and purpose of God. So first, let me ask, uh, what is grace? Well, grace is defined as unmerited divine assistance uh, given humans for their regeneration or sanctification. Um, so just so we are clear, I don't want anyone confused, um, we need to understand what the word unmerited means. Um, unmerited means not adequately earned or deserved. So basically, grace is divine assistance that we are given by God that we have done nothing to deserve. Um, so with this, uh, we must ask scripturally, uh, has God devised more than one plan for the salvation of mankind? The answer is unequivocally no. The Bible clearly teaches in the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Now, we could stop right there and make our point with the character of God. Excuse me. And how he is unchanging. However, the verse continues. It says, as we read on, Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So, this verse shows that not only does God not change his ways, but if he did, the children of Israel, Israel is actually the new name God gave to Jacob, that's who Jacob is, they would die if God changed. Meaning the followers of God on earth would have ceased to exist if God changed his ways. So, what kept them from being consumed then, we must ask, God's unchanging grace. In the Bible, grace has always, my friends, it has always been the method of saving the fallen race of humanity. If you do not believe me, 
Let's all turn in our Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter number 34, verses 6 and verse 7. Together, we're going to read this closely. Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. And it reads, And the Lord passed before him, meaning Moses, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and unto the fourth generation. So God not only reveals his character and his true intent in his name to Moses, but he tells him clearly that grace is literally who he is and what God is about. This is why God is constantly telling Moses in the books of Exodus, in the books of Leviticus, and in the book of Numbers, one law for you and for the stranger that sojourns there with you. He has always had the same way for everyone. No variableness with God, my friends. None. Or as the book of James puts it, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's found in James chapter 1 and verse 17. If grace was not available to those in what we commonly refer to as the Old Testament, then life as we know it would have ceased to exist at the fall of humanity in the Garden of Eden. It was by the grace of God that Adam and Eve did not die when they sinned against him in the Garden. It was by his grace that the plan of redemption was formed to save all mankind. What many confuse as law in the handwriting of ordinances, which were used to only teach the people of the plan of salvation, if you have any questions about what the handwriting of ordinances are, or what, uh, or what they are, or what they mean, please message me personally here on YouTube at Following Christ, um, or send me an email at the email address that I provided below, and I'll be glad to explain what that means. Um, it was the law of ordinances that Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 says was blotted out that pointed the believers before the crucifixion to salvation in Christ Jesus alone. Those ordinances showed them what Christ would do to take away the sins of the world. And as long as they had faith in God of what they were doing, his grace saved them. Just like it saves us after the cross, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. we pretty sure many of you know this verse. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If those before the cross of, the cross of Christ were saved by the law and of works, like many are ignorantly proclaiming, then they would have something to boast over those of us who claim to be New Testament Christians. And that would actually make Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 a false verse and false doctrine um, because they then would be saved by their own keeping of the law and not by the grace of God through Christ Jesus. Friends, we must keep in mind when Paul says the things that many proclaim Christians ignorantly attempt to use to discredit the scriptures because basically that's actually what you're doing. Um, we must keep in mind the only Bible Paul had to use on any of the statements that he makes is the very portion of scripture that many are ignorantly trying to discard, which is the Old Testament. Um, that's all that was available to him. Uh, that's all that was available to the disciples. Um, ironically enough, Paul himself believed everything in what we call the Old Testament. According to Acts chapter 24 and verse 14, and it reads, But this I confess unto thee, that after the which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. 
believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So if Paul believed in what we consider the Old Testament and worshiped God according to, uh, to how he believed, he, 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 he worshiped God according to what he believed, so why would he then teach differently than his own faith? All right? Uh, for he would be a false preacher and a heretic if that was the case. Because he's doing one thing, but he's believing another. He's saying one thing, but he believes another. That's a lie. He's lying. He would be a heretic. Okay? So furthermore, Paul even states in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith saved those before the cross and not the law as many claims. So we're going to read, we're going to start at, um, in Hebrews chapter number 11. And we're going to start at verse number 4, all right? Let's read this together. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. And it says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had his testimony, or this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, meaning God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, and not knowing whether he went, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundation." whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised therefore sprang uh, there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in, uh, in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that, such, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac. And he that hath received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received. Received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ uh, greater than riches than the treasures of Egypt. 
For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab uh, perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4 through 33. And with that, how again are we saved? According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Those in the Old Testament were saved by the grace of God through their faith in the promises of Jesus' sacrifice. Just as we are today. So if someone attempts to say or teach differently, we must remember the words of Paul in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8. Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Because if someone says that we are somehow magically, by grace, saved differently than the patriarchs and the prophets, which came before us, they are preaching a different gospel than what the Bible teaches. And... They're therefore preaching a different Jesus. And that would be considered a doctrine of devils. Because we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That's found in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10. Everything is only made possible by God's grace. Uh, we need to study our scriptures, friends. I encourage you to study your scriptures, to research everything that I have presented here. Um, everything is only made possible by grace. Everyone is saved by grace. Christ died for all. That's what John chapter 3, verse 16 says. He died for all. Um, so, it's past time for a simple reading of the Bible. We need to in-depthly pray and study it. Um, for without it, deception will continue to sweep across the land and we will be deceived and ultimately lost. Um, this is your host following Christ and you must remember that no matter whether you like this, whether you accept it or not, truth always remains true. Whether we believe it is or not. God bless. My friends, it's time to wake up.